What's going on guys, Frixies here, and as from the title you can see, this video is going to be about 10 ways you can improve your game in Call of Duty, and this video is going to be about anywhere from completely new people to first person shooters, new people to Call of Duty, average players, casual players, and even good players, if you guys, even if the good players can take one good tip out of this, that would make me happy, and I did my job, so here we go. Tip number one, you got to... In Call of Duty, you have to understand the weapons. Each weapon category from assault rifle, submachine gun, light machine gun, and so on, they have their own general strengths and weaknesses. Yeah, strengths and weaknesses. And within those subcategories, some are better at closer range, some are better at longer range. And sometimes there's there's always outliers in Black Ops 3. Treyarch always does this. For example, the Razorback SMG in um in Black Ops 3, it's it outclasses most of the assault rifles in medium range combat. And some assault rifles outclass it in short range combat. So every weapon is different, and just because it's an LMG doesn't mean that it's necessarily bad in close range. It's very specific to the weapon. The Gorgon is terrible at close range, but the Dingo, it outclasses, I'd say, a good like half of the SMGs up close, especially if you put the laser sight on and you move faster with it. So that's that's it, man. That's tip number one. Just get to know the weapon. They're, they're just like women. They're, they're different and crazy, but they're not the same. They're all crazy, though. Tip number two, <laughs> try not be loading after every kill. So the average magazine capacity of an assault rifle is 30 bullets. And if you have decent aim, it takes six bullets to kill someone. You know, granted, you're going to miss two, maybe three bullets up close. Who knows? But you can get an average of four kills per magazine. And I find myself doing this a lot. I get a kill and I just reload real quick. Like, look at me. I think I do it right here. No, I actually learned from my advice right here, but most of the times after a kill, I'd reload just out of habit and then his buddy out of the corner would come and my hands would be in my balls, re like reloading and then they catch me. So try not to reload after every kill, uh, really trust your aim and if you have 10 bullets in the mag and you hear people coming in your headset, don't reload, aim and make those 10 shots count. Tip number three. If you're new, you have to have small kill streaks. And this tip is not just having small kill streaks, it's putting kill streaks or score streaks rather according to your performance. For me, I can get away with having wraps every other game. I can do that. But someone new to Black Ops 3, stick to the, like the RCXD, uh, the UAV and the counter UAV or the care package. Actually, yeah, use the care package because you could still have a chance of getting a wraith or something cool with a low kill streak. So the kill streaks don't like if you're completely new to Call of Duty, don't go all Rambo and oh god, these guys get owned. Holy shit! And rocking the Netflix and chill <laughs> akimbo pistols right here. An idea for my little brother, but I'm getting sidetracked right now. Let's talk about step number four. You got to know how each map plays. And this just comes from experience, or if you want to get the edge, you can go on combat training. And if you're having trouble in a map like Havoc, you just like, where is the enemy? How can I control that certain room, the hot spot? You want to go on combat training, you just want to learn that. And then you want to learn its weak spots, its choke points. And when you go to multiplayer, I guarantee you, your performance will increase tremendously. Tip number five. You want to find your playstyle. This just comes from playing the game. Do you find yourself hiding behind a corner all the time, being a camper? Not that there's anything wrong with that. There is something wrong with that. But anyway, not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm trying to bite my tongue right here. Finding your playstyle will help you find the weapons you want to use to perform well in Call of Duty. If you find yourself going balls deep in enemy territory in front of their face you might try to roll with a shotgun or like a vesper or a vmp or a high fire rate if you find yourself supporting your teammates and having covering fire you might want to rock something with like a high magazine capacity like a weevil or an lmg or something like that and finding your place that will also help you 
find the attachments for your gun. If you are very stealthy and defensive, you want to stick to the suppressor, the stock, the grip. And if you're really rush heavy, you want to stick to like rapid fire, laser sight, quick draw, you know, all that jazz. Step number six. If you're new to Call of Duty, the game modes you'd want to play are team deathmatch and free for all. And there's a lot of reasons for this. The main reason is it's a high volume of players and it gives you the best connectivity. And if you're not the best at Call of Duty already, adding lag, lag to that, sorry, lag, L-A-G-G, -G, lag, lag, go, go, go. Well, adding lag to that does not help the cause at all. It just makes things so much frustrated. If you have bad aim, if you have no shot, plus high ass ping, don't even, no, you might as well just sell the game, man. That's just, just frustrating. It's not even fun at that point. So try to stick to TDM. There's so many people playing. You're going to find people around your local region and have a great connection. The second reason why I say this is it's a lot more casual than things like Domination or Safeguard or Hardpoint. Hardpoint is kind of like Headquarters. If you haven't, if you played that in the previous Call of Duty games, it's very competitive. And if you're completely new, it's like getting thrown right into the wolves, man. These people sweat so hard. You get spawn killed. And how do you expect to learn anything when you're just dying right from your spawn, getting killed by enemy kill streaks? Those fucking wraps, the spiky balls of death, the spicy, <laughs> I was about to say the spicy testicles of death. Yep, that's the wraps, the spicy testicles, guys. Step number seven, Um, you want to look at the mini map like you look in your car mirror when you drive. Of course, you don't want to stare at your map all the time because you'll get shot in front of what's in front of you, just like if you're driving a car. If you see you know, the rear view mirror, if you stare at the whole time, you're going to get into an accident. Same thing with that. You want to do this every three to five seconds. Just glance at it real quick, see where your teammates are, see where the enemy is. And I know it's a lot to do in a half a second, but the more you do it, you just need to take a look at it. And then every time you look, you'll get better at judging where the enemy is. You'll know when the spawn's flipped, you'll know where your enemies are positioned. And just by looking at the map, even without having UAV on, your teammates are going to point in a certain direction. There's going to be one dot on the radar, and then that's most likely where enemy territory is. Step numero, what is this? Eight? Yeah, step eight. You s buy a pair of headphones, man. You don't have to get the best headset, even if you have like a cheap Apple iPhone $20 pair of headphones just use something and attach it to your controller because you can hear everything in this game this is a very sound horror based game you can hear the clips of people's grenades you can hear when they reload you can hear the footsteps that's a big thing and it just helps you become more of an aware player you're gonna see in this gameplay a lot I just pause for a second because I'm hearing what's going on and a guy comes around the corner sprinting and he gets caught just like that. I had awareness on right here. I heard him come. I stopped sprinting and I just kept shooting. And you won't get snuck up on people without dead silence on. And that's a great thing. If you find yourself getting shot from the back a lot, get yourself a pair of headsets. Um, damn, these guys are getting old. 400 points right there. Goddamn. Um, yeah, if you won't get snuck up on, one of the worst things in Call of Duty is getting shot from the side and the back all the time. It's just not not even just frustrating it's just aggravating it just makes you want to stop playing the game because you're like what's the point you're not facing anyone in front of you all right step number nine tip number nine rather you want to try different control setups and sensitivity i want to talk about sensitivity first and a lot of people think that higher sensitivity is better or lower sensitivity is the best it really depends on the person I play on 9 sensitivity, anywhere from like 8 to 10, but 9 is usually where I'm at. Lower if I'm sniping or if I'm uh, hip firing my weapon a lot like a shotgun. I don't want it to like flare out of nowhere. I want more control over it. Every sensitivity for every person is different. You might, you're going to find yourself changing it for different weapons, for sniper rifles. You're going to find yourself either increasing it dramatically or decreasing it dramatically. I find myself playing on 7 when I snipe because of the lack of the aim assist of this game. It's really hard to control that thing, man. They nerfed the shit out of snipers. They got to fix that. And, uh, okay, enough about sensitivity. Let's talk about control setups. So, this game, it automatically puts you to default, which you jump using the A button, melee using the right stick, 
and you slide or crouch using the B. I think this is retarded. Like, excuse my language, but I don't give a fuck. That shit's retarded. <laughs> the default setup, it's just, it's, I talk a lot about preference, but this is clearly inferior. You want to get used to either playing on tactical or tactical bumper jumper, especially in Call of Duty Advanced Warfare and Call of Duty Black Ops 3 when there's like verticality introduced in the game. You're going to find myself, oh, you're going to find me in this game jumping a lot and shooting and catching people and they're looking in the sky they can't catch me you have automatically the upper hand when you're playing on certain control setups with bumper jumper tactical i get to drop shot people i get to slide jump people without moving my stick and also i get to hit the left bumper and jump and still aim my weapon and shoot and hip fire while if i was to not play it i would press the a or i think it's the x on ps3 or ps4 yeah the, the jump button the regular default one if I do that my right thumbstick would be removed from my right thumb or my right thumb would be removed from right thumbstick fuck man <laughs> god damn but I'm rolling with it my right thumb would be removed from my right thumbstick and it would just be awkward I wouldn't be able to aim my weapon and it would just it's a it's just a hot mess you want to try other control setups and see how you like it and before you know it Ooh, get home, son. God damn. And before you know it, you're just gonna be a superior player. And tip number 10. You want to aim before corners, guys. Please. This is the biggest noob mistake right here. You're gonna find experienced players almost never do this. They go around a corner and they're ready to aim. They're either hip firing a weapon or they're aiming down the sights right around a corner. Because that's one of the main reasons how people get killed. You, you just like right there if I didn't aim around that corner if I just kept sprinting that guy would have nailed me easily just again I did that right there I just got lucky but see third example right there you don't want if I just sprinted through that corner I would have died and also another thing is co kind of goes along with aiming before corners you don't want to sprint indoors like if you're in this blue room right here I do it sometimes if I know for sure no one's there but if you don't know what's going on don't even sprint it's best to keep it hip fired your weapon or uh, aim down the sights so in indoors I learned that tip from scene enters back in modern warfare 2 in 2010 and I used it today and my game has improved tremendously so let's just go over the 10 tips real quick and list them on the screen now Understand weapons first. Try not to reload after every kill. Use kill streaks to your suiting. Know how each map plays and the best weapons to use. Find your play style. Stick to team deathmatch and free for all if you're new. Look at the mini map every three to five seconds. Use a headset. Try different control setups and mess around the sensitivity. And aim before corners while not sprinting indoors too much thank you guys for watching and i hope you guys have an amazing new year i know i will i'll catch you next time and i got this new ice ball microphone so my voice sounds crispy and sexy so leave a like for that i'll catch you next time peace